the moon fell in love with the Earth, and Galileo Galilei fell in love with the moon. Why the moon still fascinates us, and what could be hiding on its dark side? Ever wondered why our waves reach such heights, or why our tides come in and out? Ever wondered about the phases of the moon and their consequences on Earth? The moon reflects lights from the sun, so the different phases of the moon are seen at different times of the month due to its position relative to the sun. When there's a new moon, it's because the sun is behind the moon and no light is reflected from its surface. So, during the new moon phase, the moon is not seen in the night sky. At full moon, the moon is directly opposite the sun and the moon shines like a pearl in the night sky. Between the new moon and the full moon are intermittent phases where we only see a fraction of the lunar surface. Do the different moon phases have an important bearing on us on Earth? Of course they do. Let's take a closer look. The changing phases of the moon have guided us for thousands of years. A calendar month, for example, is the average number of days it takes to go from one full moon to another. We only see one side of the moon, the so-called near surface, from our position on Earth. The other side of the moon, which we call the dark side, cannot be seen from Earth. A group of Chinese and Dutch astronomers recently launched a rover, Chang'e, on the dark side of the moon and is sending back fascinating images. How big is our moon? Well, it's a fair bit smaller, about quarter of the size of Earth, a much smaller ratio than other planets have with their moons. Even so, the moon has a great effect on Earth. Unlike Earth, the moon has no atmosphere. This implies that, if you leave your footprint on the lunar surface, it stays undisturbed for hundreds of years. Also, as a consequence of having no atmosphere, lunar surface temperatures vary significantly. The moon is more attracted to the Earth than the Earth is to the moon, gravitationally speaking, that is. So, the moon's love for the Earth stirs up the oceans and results in tidal forces. It creates an ocean bulge held in place under the moon that causes two high tides and two low tides per day as the Earth spins on its axis. High tides happen on the side of the Earth nearest the moon, due to gravity and also on the furthest side from the moon due to the inertia of water. The low tides happen between those bulges. The moon is the second brightest celestial wonder in the Earth's sky after the sun. As a result, the moon was seen as a god by prehistoric and ancient cultures. The Greek goddess of the moon is Artemis, the twin sister of Apollo, god of the sun. In Chinese mythology, the moon goddess is Chang'e, wife of the ancient warrior Ho Yi. Chang'e stole Ho Yi's magic medicine and secretly took it, giving her the ability to fly to the moon. But that medicine was a one-way ticket. Chang'e couldn't fly back to Earth and must stay where she is, with just her pet rabbit for company. The Chang'e spacecraft and rovers exploring the dark side of the moon are named after her. Perhaps they will find her, wandering somewhere in the shadows? But how long has the moon been with us? As long as the Earth, 4.6 billion years old? To know this, we need to have a look at how the moon came to be. Scientists have been arguing about this for many years and still haven't come to a firm conclusion. There are several theories. One has it that the Moon is a spin-off from the Earth's crust. Really? Was Earth ever spinning so fast it could throw out an object as big as the Moon? Another theory held that the Moon already existed and was eventually drawn to the Earth. An irresistible attraction. Call it love if you like. A third theory said the Earth and Moon were formed at the same time, perhaps bursting out of a black hole in our corner of the Milky Way galaxy. But we seem to have settled on another hypothesis for the time being, that an asteroid the size of Mars, weighing about 10% of the Earth, smashed into our newly formed planet and threw out a mass of material that fused together 
to form the beautiful silver wonder we now know as our moon. We only began to understand any of this when an Italian gentleman named Galileo Galilei came along, one of the first astronomers to look at the night sky through a telescope. As the moon had fallen in love with Earth, Galileo Galilei fell in love with the moon and the rest of the night sky. Besides the moon, this spyglass has allowed me to discover a multitude of fixed stars never before seen. Galileo's fame has lasted the centuries. Europe's modern-day satellite system for navigating is named after him. But at the time, Galileo's opinions were deemed to be dangerous. He shared Copernicus's view that the Earth was not flat, but round. It was not at the center of the universe, but revolved around the Sun. And the Moon? It revolved around the Earth. The powers that be didn't like what they heard and the visionary named Galileo Galilei spent the last years of his life imprisoned in his home. Night after night, no doubt, looking up at the sky, perhaps wondering what it might be like to walk on the moon. It wasn't too long before we were to find out.